so our today's session is data visualization and i have actually kept this session in two uh, like two parts so the first part we will understand the overview of data visualization the concepts uh, like the different kinds of charts and where we will use different kinds of charts uh, why we are actually using data visualization at all uh, then why it is important basically and some sample python code like how we can you know like plot some important charts uh, also i will try to complete this like data visualization in web application using fusion charts so in my last session i have uh, like uh, given an overview on how we can you know like use fusion charts in f sharp and c sharp uh, so this is again uh, this, this is a cool thing to do like in the web applications if we can do some analysis and we can render those charts in the web applications so uh, this i will try to cover also okay so going forward uh, uh, as uh, like as a moderator already talked about me so a little bit more i will tell that i am leading uh, digital transformation projects for almost a decade now i am having overall 16 years of experience and for last 10 years i am working in various um, intelligent automation projects then the project includes ai ml blockchain rpa and also some projects are there in ar vr metaverse and web 3.0 uh, I am also like, I like to be a leader by example. So I like to do hands-on coding and I like to do research on the new technologies, especially how they can be handshaken with each other. I am also passionate about, uh, you know, like combining powers of various tools and technologies and bringing innovation to the solutions, solutions delivered. So this is all about my passion. Apart from this, personally, I like to uh, trek. I like to go off-roading. I have biked also in very high altitude. Uh, so this is about me. Uh, so going forward, I will, without wasting any time, I will come to the main topic of today's. So we are talking about data visualization. So let's understand what is data visualization first. And we all know that it is a visual or pictorial representation of data. So uh, basically there will be raw data coming and there will be very large data. So we need to understand and interpret and analyze the data. And then uh, in that form, uh, if the, in, in that form or in the very raw form, it is not very, you know, like easy to understand the data. So we uh, like it is, it makes sense that if we, you know, like represent the data in a pictorial format, like seeing the color co format or color coding or some areas will be darkened or brightened, seeing those, you know, like color formatting, the charts, different charts, the trends, uh, we can understand that how the data is actually performing. Okay, so there can be various different tools, including graphs, charts, maps, etc. And the goal of data visualization is to take large and complex data set and present them in a way that is easily understandable and accessible to a wide audience, as I mentioned. And this can help people make better decisions based on the data. That can also identify trends and patterns that might not be immediately apparent from looking at the raw data. So this also I will show you in a uh, like taking a raw data and how like seeing the raw data, we won't be understanding anything, but as soon as I, you know, like give a pictorial representation of it, uh, we will understand that what this data is representing or what this data is all about. Okay, so without spending any time on the slides, I will go on the examples for today. I have prepared some uh, Jupyter notebook with some data visualization techniques. Okay, so here actually I have given the same definition of data visualization. This is a Jupyter notebook uh, and it is like uh, opened in Python 3. And as you can see, like these two libraries we need for basically for the visualization. The basic library is matplotlib. Uh, we will use Seaborn here, which is actually written on matplotlib and it actually gives you some ease of coding. So the syntax is easier than little bit, little bit than matplotlib and uh, we can understand the syntax basically. And it is very easy to understand. So I will just, uh, I will just go and run this line of code. So I'm just importing these two libraries here. So for the interest of time, I have written the code and kept it ready so that I can demonstrate it easily. So you can see that like, I'm importing Seaborn and I'm importing matplotlib. So these two libraries, as I said, it is necessary. So I will just <clears throat> run this line of code. And then the our first, uh, first chart is the line plot, okay? So what is a line plot? Now, I have seen in my experience that people have you know, like though these uh, terms seem simple, like line plot, bar chart, I think we have done it from our childhood days or from our high school days, but people have difficulty in understanding that where to use what. 
um, but because I have seen in my experience, like even now, like when I'm asked somebody like, where you will use the line, line chart, then they are fully blank. Like in which data or what kind of data they will use the line chart, uh, they are like blank. So the basic concept should be clear for that. So what is a line chart? Line chart actually, when we have some numerical data or numerical data points, which we need to see the performance over the time, okay? Um, it can be time, it can be other numerical variable also. So when we are seeing like drawing a trend of that variable, uh, over a you know like over a ten year or over a year or over the months, so those kind of trend uh, actually when we need, then we will use a line plot. So if you see the first number thing is it's, it is it is a data points along a number line, and second thing is that it is a visualization. Uh, it it is like the it is gives the facilitates the visualization. Uh, between the two numerical variables. So whenever we have the numerical values and we want to see how, the, how that variable is performing over a period of time, then I think this is a best plot to do. Okay, so uh, here I will be using, so if you see that I have uh, uh, imported Seaborn library and Seaborn I am uh, putting the allies as SNS. So SNS, uh, I will I will try to you know like analyze some of the data set which is available in SNS. So Seaborn has many data sets available with it. Uh, if you want to know, know the name of the data set, you can just run this command. It will give you all the names of the data set. So as you can see that these are all the data sets available here. And these data sets are okay, substantial data sets, like it will be having more than thousand rows and five to six columns. So it is good to analyze the data, like to draw in a visualization. So these many data sets we have in Seaborn. Okay, so I have used here this one fMRI. So this is basically a brain signal uh, uh, pattern mapping kind of a, like data is coming here. So if I just load this data set, so this is my data over here. I am just, you know, like this is not the entire data set because I have, you know, like uh, used the command head that gives actually the first five rows. So the shape of the data set may be very long. Uh, I will run these also. So as you can see, it is containing thousand, like more than thousand rows and five columns. Five columns we can see here and more than thousand rows. So if you see here, so we have a time point, which is in seconds, like 18 seconds, 14 seconds, 18 seconds, like this, some event. So this is again a categorical data. Still, I don't know like uh, what is this event constituting of, um, like what are the data is given here because I am seeing only the first five rows, okay? And then there is a signal, like some signal is coming, okay? This is also a numerical value. Now, if I want to see the performance of this signal in the times, like in the different point of time, uh, and I want to plot a line plot, okay? So then I will go with this SNS library only, and there is a function called line plot, okay? So if I want to plot it, so syntax is very easy. I will explain you why I am using this, giving these parameters. So you have what you have to do is anytime you are using any library in Python or Jupyter Notebook, anywhere, uh, you can have, you just have to use shift tab. So this will give you the entire function details, like what that function is taking basically. So if you see, there is an entire documentation of it. So X basically is my X axis. Y is basically my Y axis and data is the data what you are feeding. So this is the data like the pandas data frame. So SNS is loading the data in a pandas data frame that I have already, already loaded in this fMRI variable. Okay, so these three things are mandatory. So I am passing these things. The other things thing also, other things also you can just, you know, like explore like the size, style, units, palettes. This is a color palette. Then hue, I will explain what is hue and how you can use it. So these are the different parameters which you can send. The markers, markers also I have used in one of the plot. Okay, so these are the various things like they, there is actually, you know, like endless possibilities which you can explore, so, uh, explore over here. So if you go to this documentation, through this documentation, everything is mentioned in very deep, very much detail. Like what is this X and Y, what is U, what is size, what is style. So <clears throat> there is no difficulty, you know, like passing the parameter like, and at any point I won't be any confusion like what parameter I will be passing over here. And for the Seaborn also, the official documentation is available in the website for Seaborn website. So you can check the documentation from there. It is very vivid. But for the timing, you can see the, uh, the syntax is very easy. So only thing I'm passing is the x-axis because for plotting a chart, I need a x-axis value, I need a y-axis value and the data set I am loading here. So this is my data set, which I have taken in the pandas data frame. So you can see that fMRI 
I have loaded this data set over here and I am just giving this data. Okay, so this is a plot I am getting. So I can see from the plot, it is very easy to analyze. It, it is not very easy to analyze from the data given here because it is only showing first five rows. Even if I see the all thousand rows, it, is, it will be very difficult for me to understand the pattern. But if I see this visualization, it will be very easy for me to understand. Like at some point five, the, my signal is a maximum. And again, it has got minimum at between 10 to 12.5. So likewise, it is very easy to understand the pattern, like where it got maximum, where it got the peak, like the high peak and the low peak. So this way you can you know, like understand the pattern from visualization. Okay, now there are some other important aspects. So I, as I told you, like this, this, this uh, column event, event I don't know, only I'm seeing this, uh, this value is their steam. I don't know what are the other categorical values of present over there. So to know this, if I want to see like what are the categories over there. So the simple syntax is you need to just, you know, like pull that column. So that is an event column. So fMRI, so fMRI is a data set in that the event column and I am calling the unique function. So it will give you all the values, like what are the unique values present there. So I will just run this. It is giving me, there are only two values present that is team and Q. Okay, so now I will be trying to plot uh, for both these values. So how steam is performing and how the queue is performing. So there will be basically two series. Now how to fit the series? So there the hue comes into picture. So whenever we have to, you know, like uh, uh, they plot a multi-series plot or a chart, then we can, you know, like give the categorical values to the hue. So the categorical value is event. So event is a column name. So I am feeding that to the hue. So then it will give the two colored chart basically. So if I plot this, as you can see here, so I am seeing the two categories of the, the, are the, were there for the event. One is team and one is queue. And as I can see that the blue line represents team and the orange line represents queue. And I am seeing this plot, like how they are performing over the time. Okay. So this is how you can, you know, like explore some of the functionalities here. Like I have put some style also. So in the style, I have again given event. So if you see, it is actually given me two style, like line style, two kinds of line style. So the first one is a solid line. The second line, second line is a dotted line. So it is giving me a different segregation here, like how we can, you know, like use these different parameters. Again, I have used some markers. So if you put markers equal to true, it will actually mark the points, different points on the data. So if you see here, like uh, it is giving the solid blue points here, the solid round marks. So this is a this is on the first line, and on the second line we are getting the cross mark. So here also some segregation is there. Okay, so likewise you can you know like explore different uh, functionalities over here. Okay, so our next plot is bar plot. Again, uh, there is like people you know like um, confused between bar plot and the histogram, but both of these things are not same. Bar plot is when we are plotting something on the categorical data. So we have a categorical data. Categorical data can be like your sex, uh, like male, female, uh, then country names, okay? And we need to see uh, that like how the, you know, like how the uh, population of the, like what is the population of the different countries, okay? So in that way, the bar plot will be very much, you know, like it will give you a good visualization on that. So you can see all the countries and how the, you know, like how, what is the number of population, what is the frequency of data you can see there. Now, histogram is something where you want to see the continuous range of data. So it is again a bar chart only, but it is giving you a continuous range. Like you, was, you want to see something for, um, suppose for the age range, like for five to 10 years, you are recommending some films in Netflix. For 10 to 15 years, you're recommending some set of films some different set of films or what is a liking, okay? Or what are the, what is the number of viewers, some frequency was setting. So when this continuous range of data is there, then histogram is a thing that you can use. Histogram is a chart you can use where you can, you know, like see the frequency uh, trend also, frequency trend line also, the frequency distribution trend line and also the bar graphs, okay? So <clears throat> here I have used another data and this is a external CSV file. So this is also very popular uh, CS like data set, uh, which is easily available in Kaggle.com. So you can also download some of the data sets for practice. Uh, this is an IMDB data set. Basically it is giving you like the information on the IMDB rating of all the films, uh, good films. So I will just run this. Okay, so this is my data. So I am showing you first five rows basically. So as you can see, the 
uh, series title that is a film title basically then the release year uh, the link of the film the certificate the run time uh, genre then imdb rating everything is there so this is my data set basically even star 1 star 2 star 3 like this the star names are there okay so this is a little bit bigger data set with the higher number of columns so if you see the gross uh, then the number of votes all these things are there now as i can see like if you analyze this data also like data analysis is very important now if you want to see here like if you you will see that the run time is given in 142 minute 175 minute 152 minute so people will think it's a string value but actually it is not a string value variable you have to just you know like explicit minute like uh, delete the minute from the string and you have to get a numerical data so how what is the run time of a film maybe you can see some analysis or do some analysis like how the rating is you know like uh, rating is you know like differing with the different run times of the film is the if the film is short is the rating good or if the film is you know like little bit more run time if the rating is good so those thing also you can check so this is basically a numerical data though it is coming in a string format so here actually the data cleaning part comes again if you see the year so it is again at the date date time frame right so it is just a year you cannot take a mean median of this year so basically it is not a numerical data in that way but yes it is a it is a time series analysis you can do with the uh, like different years okay so now if i go here so i i want to you know like plot a bar plot against the certificates so certificate and the meta score okay so this is my certificate basically that is a rating like a or ua or like what is the rating of the film and the meta score which is given over here okay so i want to just uh, uh, plot a bar bar graph over here so i will run this so my different kinds of certificate coming is a ua u pg 13 r and nan nan means it is a missing value so all these kinds of you know like uh, different kinds of certificates are coming okay now i know at least that what is the data present in the certificate column okay now if i just plot this again uh, if you see this function bar plot the functionality the syntax is common the syntax what we are sending it is x y and data so it is very simple like this is like you can remember any time if you little bit do the practice if you don't do the practice also these are the, these are the things you can remember any time if you don't know the function name like what function you have to actually put then you can just type like this sns and you can put tab like dot bar and you can put tab so the function names automatically comes so it is a intelligence which is get provided here okay so this is my plot but if you see if you analyze this plot you will see that uh, this data is not very much clear if you see like these are like overlapped you cannot see the certificate name very well right like the data is not very much clear to you the visualization is not good uh, for me it is not good so i think for others also it is not legible enough to understand that because it is overlapped the values are overlapped so uh, i will what i will do here so this is also one thing you need to know like where you need to change the orientation and so that the visualization looks little bit better so what i will do is i will change the orientation here now again what is orientation so i said already right if you want to know any, about anything just do shift tab you will get the entire documentation on the function so if you go over here what is orientation it is clearly written that it is vertical or horizontal for vertical you need to put v for horizontal you need to put h so this is my orientation so if i change my orientation that means whatever is in the y axis will come in the x axis and the vice versa okay so i have will put the orientation here as h okay and i will little bit order it like the on the score so but so that bas the basically in the descending order so that the highest score comes first and then the lowest score okay so this is what i am doing here so i am just turning the chart now while turning the chart what i need to do as i said you like the x axis will come in the y axis so x and y parameter also i need to change over here so if you see here x is certificate here y is meta score here now i am what i have to pass i have to pass x equal to meta score and y equal to certificate so please keep in mind this otherwise you will get the error so whenever you are changing the orientation you have to specify the x and y axis accordingly okay so i will run this again now if you see the it looks good for me it looks good every all the values are coming good i can see a clear visualization i can see there is a highest meta score for the approved one and then slowly it is descending and think the lowest being uh, this one gp and these values are not there these are missing values 
so i think it is like good enough for me to understand but seeing the data itself i was raw data i was not understanding anything but now i think the visualization is good for me okay now the next one scatter plot and this is a very important plot very very important plot so scatter plot actually you we use uh, uh, generally people if we if i ask that where we use a scatter plot there is lots of confusion so scatter plot we use where we need to you know like show the correlation between the two variables right between the two numerical variables basically so how they are performing uh, uh, against each other so if i give an example a uh, layman example can be um, if my if the square foot of the flat is increasing whether the price of the flat is also increasing so if you are going to buy a house and if the uh, total square foot is increasing so with that will the price is increasing so is there any correlation between the price and the square foot of the flat uh, so you know like understanding these parameters uh, we can use the scatter plot okay now scatter plot there are several scatter plots like you need to understand that what is the you know like uh, how it is varying basically so the maximum uh, value of any correlation is 1 so and the maximum minimum the minimum value is minus 1 so if you see this is perfectly correlation positive correlation that means the value is 1 when the correlation value is 1 between the two variables of course and it is perfectly correlated that means if one variable increase with the same proportion the other variable is also increasing and all of these points are falling in the same line so all these points are co collinear basically they are falling on the same line so if i draw a line over here straight line all these points will fall on the same line so this is my perfect positive correlation okay now if you see this this is not uh, one this is not the correlation is equal to is not one but yes there is a positive correlation that means that if my x is increasing my y is also increasing and there is a positive trend right it, uh, it is it is ri rising right but the data is scattered here and there so if i draw a straight line not all points will lie on the same line correct it is like little bit um some points will lie some points will you know like scatter here and there um, above or below the line okay so this is my positive correlation and it can be like uh, uh, can be varying from 0.8 0.9 so it is a good like high positive correlation now low positive correlation where the data is little bit more scattered than the like if i draw my line uh, draw a straight line then um, the data like all the data like maximum data won't fall on the same line right some data will fall and maximum data will is scattered here and there but still i can see a positive trend that if my x is increasing my y is also increasing so there is a positive trend but the correlation is little bit low so it can, we can say that the value can be like my, uh, uh, below 0.5 it can be 0.3 0.5 0.4 like that okay so again like was the same with the negative correlation so if it is you know like for all the points falling in the same line and the where like it is you know like on the decreasing side it is the, the it is the grade or the variant is you know on the decreasing side the angle is decreasing then it is a negative correlation the value is minus 1 so that means that if my y x is increasing my y is decreasing and vice versa right so again this is the same thing like high negative correlation like there is a high negative correlation means um, the like if i draw a line over here so most of the points will fall in the on the same line so it is a collinear points uh, the negative correlation means it will be minus 0.8 minus 0.9 so it is a high negative correlation and similarly this is a low negative correlation so this is how we understand the scatter plot and if we get a plot like this one so this means there is no correlation at all because if you draw a line i think hardly two points will also fall on the same on, on the same line so will two points will be collinear so it is fully scattered the points are scattered here and there and there is no you know like relation like if x is increasing you cannot tell that y will always increase or y will always decrease so there is no correlation as such so now this is this is about scatter plot now let's see how it uh, like how we can plot a scatter plot so again i have taken another data set called iris so this is actually basically a data set on the flowers uh, or with the various species so i will just um, uh, run this uh, just see my data so this is how the data is coming again it is a big data but it is showing only first five rows so you can see the sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the species so again i am not able to see all the species over here i don't know also what all species are there in this column 
okay what are what are the different values over here this is a categorical data definitely but i don't know what are the different categories present okay so to find that i will again run this command that is dot unique so it will give me various categories so i can see there are three different categories setosa versicolor and virginicum good enough okay so i will see like how my sepal length is varying over the, with the petal length so i will try to draw a draw a scatter plot on this so these are very common data sets which, which uh, you know which is available in seaborn so you can you know like explore all of these data set so this is coming and you if you see the syntax again it is the same thing like i am giving some x value i am giving some y value and i am filling the data so that is what i am passing through no other parameters i have explored here but of course if you want you can explore other things also and see how the chart is changing right so this is how it you know it, it is showing a positive correlation definitely so we can see a rising trend over here uh, let me go to the chart okay so it is a rising trend definitely um, so but i am not understanding that how you know like three different variants uh, are performing here so uh, i am just seeing a overall chart with the same color but it is like difficult to understand that whether it is for setosa or virginica so i am not understanding for the different categories right so for that what i will do as i said you so if you need to understand different series of it you need to fit that in the hue so i am i am doing the same thing over here i am fitting spaces in the hue and i will again plot it okay so if you see here i am now clearly visible that this is my setosa variant and this is the virginica one the green one and this is a media mid, uh, like the middle one that is a versicolor okay now if you uh, analyze this chart what you find so if you find that for this one the correlation is a little bit on the lower side because if you see uh, though it is you know like um, though it is like uh, on the same it can be collinear but the trend the positive trend is little bit low if you see if the y is increasing the petal length is not so much you know like differing here so it is like mostly between 1 and 2 only okay so this is just i think the smallest flower seeing the seeing the uh, data itself i can understand the pictorial representation because the sepal length and petal length is smaller the highest one being this one the green one and you can see the petal length is also very high and the sepal length is also very high so from the data itself i can understand this flower might be a big flower and this is the smallest one and this is a medium like the middle one right so a normal one so i can see that this is also have a a uh, positive correlation like if the petal is increasing the sepal is increasing and the vice versa so the x is increasing the y is increasing basically so and this is having a positive correlation okay and the data is not too much scattered also it is like together only so we can understand this is having a positive correlation okay so if you see so this is a scatter plot okay now uh, instead of putting the species in the hue what i will do is i will put the petal length in the hue now what happens if i put the petal length in the hue how it will come okay so if you see over here uh, this is how it is coming that means the lightest color it is giving a, a like a monochromatic effect so it is using basically the same color and the various shades of the same color so the lightest being the smallest one and the darkest being the highest one so from there we can understand the three different variants right so this is also a good thing like you can explore like this with different uh, hues and how it is affecting the chart okay the okay the next one is histogram so as i said you the histogram when uh, we use when we need to show the distribution on a continuous range it can be the number of runs in the over also like in the overs okay like 0 to 5 overs 5 to 10 overs what is the number of runs like uh, scored so it will give you a frequency distribution right so here i will take another data set called diamonds and again i i can see that there is one categorical data cut and another categorical data color and the clarity i will take cut i don't know what is there in the cut i will try to find out what is there in the cut so i am just uh, written this line so i think the by now everybody knows that how i can find out that what are the values there in the categorical column so i can see that ideal premium good very good fair okay so these are my uh, values now i want to plot plot a uh, histogram over here okay so again uh, this is it is little bit dif uh, different from the like the other syntaxes like i was passing x y and uh, data basically here i am passing a column so I, here i want to see the price and how it is you know like varying 
so if i just run this you can see so this is how actually it is varying like the price and the count like uh, what is the frequency which is sold in this price so that is how it is showing basically so you can see like this is a continuous range of data okay now there are some factors which you can do so if you put over here so this is a histogram plot basically uh, okay so i will explain it i will come to the, this uh, later so first understand the distribution plot okay so these are the same basically it is also giving the uh, histogram only but only one thing is there uh, it is giving with a line so it is a it is a frequency distribution line which is coming now you can put his uh, you can just delete this so by default hist is true so histogram it will show by default but if i am putting it as false then uh, the histogram is not coming over here basically so if you see here now you can see the histogram is coming plus the line is coming okay so similarly for the histogram plot histogram plot there is a variable called kde so if i am putting kde true then the li this line is appearing if i am by default it is false so this line is not appearing that time uh, and i have changed some color also so if you see here i have put green color so it is giving me a green color chart like this i can define my bean size i can put my bean size as 10 5 so let's me put as 10 and you can see that uh, the bean size has increased basically you can see like i am getting 10 beans 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right now if i put it as 5 i will get the 5 beans so the beans have widened now basically the class intervals have widened now okay so this is how you can you know like explore the histogram there is another plot called joint plot and this actually represents the distribution of each variable plus the correlation between the variables so distribution of each variable it is actually plotting the histogram so how the variable is you know like performing plus the correlation of the variables means how the variables are performing against each other right what is the correlation whether there is any relationship existing between them so if i just plot this you can see here and you can understand so this is again this petal length and sepal length for the iris data set you can see that i can see the uh, scatter plot also like how these two variables are performing against each other plus i can see the petal length how this variable is coming uh, and the uh, sepal length okay the distribution of the petal length and sepal length okay so this is also an another again good plot when you want to see both together then this is a good analysis this gives a good analysis okay now there are some things like called a regression line so if you put kind equal to regression again if you want to see for any parameter you have to just go tab and uh, shift and tab it will give you all the parameters input parameters you are passing over here so if i put kind equal to reg that means it will just put a regression line and i am putting orange color here so let me just run this so i am just exploring different things over here so you can see the uh plot the line plot has come over here the regression lines basically the frequency distribution line and the regression line okay so this is how you can explore this plot okay now the next one is a box plot again this is a very important plot and box plot is used when we used to like when we want to see what are the outliers present in the data so outliers means uh when some data is actually you know like not it is very far from the median value like it is not actually defining your data so if i say for example the salary of the developers with 5 years experience it is coming around 1 lakh rupees 90000 to 1 lakh maybe 1 lakh 10 so the my median values let's say is 1 lakh but if i take in that like the salary of the developer who is working in uh, maybe very big company or a very good company say meta or amazon and his salary is 2 lakhs then he is fully falling in the outlier category and if i put his data into the salary data set then that data will be actually you know like the median will shift basically so if i take the average the average will come as 1.25 or 1.3 or 1.4 which is not exactly my the exact average and it is not defining my data properly so in that in those cases i need to see what are the out, uh, what are the outliers in the data and we need to treat those outliers so box plot is a very you know like a, like it gives a representation that what are the outliers in my data so i will just quickly run this so this is again another you know like data set in the sweeborn it is health experience and um, sorry health expectancy basically and it is giving you country wise data health data like the life expectancy and the uh, how much debt money is spent in the health so in usd 
So this is the, what is the data set is telling all about. Now I want to uh, draw a box plot. I want to see in my X, uh, the country and Y, the life expectancy, like how it is, you know, like uh, falling. So let me plot this. So if you see here from the data itself, we will understand that the median is actually, you know, like uh, for different countries, the median is falling in different range. So if I see for Germany, it is a bit between 76 to 78, like more than little bit more than 77. For France, it is more than 78 basically. For Great Britain, again, it is near about like nearly uh, equal to Germany. For Japan, it is uh, more like again more. For USA, it is less. So life expectancy is less basically. For Canada, it is like similar kind of trend with Germany and uh, Great Britain. Now, if you see the, uh, the fence in basically, the left fence and the right fence. So this is actually gives you the interquartile range. This, whatever is coming inside the box, this is giving you the interquartile range. So this is being my third quarter and this has been my first quarter. So it gives you Q3 minus Q1. So this is a inter interquartile range. And the fencing formula is like the, for the right fence, it is Q3 plus 1.5 into IQ1. So this difference basically. So this is how you actually uh, get these values. Now for the right fence and left fence, if you see, uh, if you see for the Japan, it is re really very high. So people have the maximum life expectancy above 84, maybe it is 90. Okay, so from the chart itself, you can understand uh, about the various countries life expectancy rate basically. So this is again a very good uh, plot. I have tried to plot some other uh, for on other data, data sets also. So you can see here. Uh, so this is a the Titanic data set as you can see that uh, the sex of the people, the age of the people who are alive, not alive, uh, then the class of the people, Okay, so all this data is there, okay? And then let me just uh, quickly plot uh, the box plot. So if you see here, again, I have just tried to put for uh, alive and age, okay? So I just want to see that, uh, what is the age of the people who are alive, yes or no, like who have died, right? But I am not seeing any, you know, like big difference in this. So the people uh, died, the people died also like the median is around 30 and people alive is also the median is around 30. So not a big difference is there. Uh, if you see these data, some outliers are data, some outliers lying here. So these th points are actually basically the outliers. Even here, some outliers are data there. So likewise, you can, you know, like analyze the box plot. Again, there are, and there is another box plot and I have taken another data set called tips. I will try to draw this. So this is again like a male, female, like based on the male, female, whether they're smoker, non-smoker, at what time they're dining and what tips they're giving, what is their total bill in the dinner or the lunch. So likewise, the data is given. Okay, so if you go and plot the box plot over here. Okay, so I have put smoker as a, in the hue. That means it will give me two series as smoker or not smoker. And uh, the order I have put female before and then the male. And that's some line width also I, I have put to, you know, like this, make this line a little bit wider. So nothing else I have put here, the everything remaining same, I am putting X, I am putting Y and I'm putting the data. Okay, so this is how it is coming. So female is coming before male. Uh, then the yes and no, you can see the blue one is a smoker and the orange one is a non-smoker. But there is not much difference I am seeing from the median values. Yes, some outliers are there in this zone like the male non-smoker who are giving more tips, I think. So th this is a tip actually. So this is some outlier value where you can sort of do some analysis on this, like this, likewise. Okay, so this is how the box plot is very important. Uh, then there is another thing called pair plot. And this allows people to easily compare the relationship between different pairs of variables. Okay, so it is actually gives all the scat scatter plot in a one grid, okay. So if you see, again, I will try to plot on the iris only. Uh, it will take some time, yes. So if you see here, this is again sepal length, sepal width, sep petal length, petal width, everything is coming in one shot. So sepal length, sepal length, you can just tally with petal length, petal width with sepal length, petal width with sepal width. Likewise, you can, you know, like see all the, like how they are performing different variables with each other. So in one grid, you can see uh, all the variables basically, like all the correlations, not variables, correlations. So this is like in that manner, the pair plot is very useful in that. So already now, by now you know how to see the scatter plot. So how to analyze the scatter plot. So likewise, you can see like all the combinations and you can understand the pattern.
okay so now another another good map is there good chart is there what is called heat map so i have again taken another data sets and i have i voted on two three columns so one is model one is task and one is score so i will just run this and you see this is my data actually basically which is coming for the glue okay so but if i ask you now that uh, can you tell me like which combination is giving me the highest value or which is giving me the lowest value it is only giving me first five rows seeing the data itself it is very difficult to understand that what is what like what is the highest what is lowest uh, like it will take days i don't think that i can do it in days also right so if i just plot a map on this a heat map okay uh, let me see how it comes okay now it is very easy to understand because the darkest region is my highest value and the lightest region is the lowest value so if you see here the darkest region here is 98 so wherever 98 is falling those combinations have the highest value right so if you want to you know like analyze some data set like how many people are coming in a shop shopping mall or a store on which uh, uh, which time of the day or which day of the week which day of the week is seeing the highest crowd so analyzing those kind of red data it will be very useful to see in a heat map so you can just at you know like seeing at the glance itself you will understand but you are not understanding seeing the raw data here okay so this is again very an another powerful technique of visualization okay now there is also pie plot so pie plot everyone knows i think it gives a share of of the you know like the variables in a data set so if you just plot this i have taken this as a you know like group a group b group c scores so these are the scores of these groups uh, maybe a sports score or a test score okay and i am trying to plot the pie plot so again these syntaxes are very easy so you can see here so it has just plotted me the pie pie plot and i can understand that group a is uh, overall proportion in the score is 21 percent so whatever the score come it is a, uh, like group a has contained like is uh, uh, having 21 percent of the overall score then group d is having 20 percent of the overall score so it is give, giving you a good you know like the visualization of the share like how much share they are having in the total data set right so likewise there is another thing important thing called subplot so subplot is nothing but actually when you want to plot uh, different plots in a grid or a matrix so if you understand this syntax the syntax is very easy so here i am defining a two by two matrix so basically i want to uh, plot here four plots so this is, it, it will be give it will be giving me a box uh, with a two by two matrix means zero one and uh, uh, zero one and uh, zero one so likewise it will give me a, uh, a matrix right so zero and one row uh, one row first row and similarly i have two columns and two rows right so likewise if you just plot it here you will see so if i am plotting i am giving here the uh, index basically so where i want to plot this so i am actually plotting here the sine plot cos plot tan uh, tan chart and the sin c chart so if you see i have taken some random data points where my lower limit is 0 and the higher limit is 10 so line space this is a numpy uh, matrix actually so numpy i have used a numpy library and i have used this line space function uh, and i am giving here 0 0 means my lowest limit is 0 that means it will start from 0 the highest limit is 10 that means it will end in 10 and between i have 1000 data points okay so on this uh, uh, random values i am plotting this chart so i am trying to plot a sign chart a cost chart, a tan chart, and a science chart. Okay. Now I am where I will place this chart in this matrix. I am placing it the first chart in the zero zero man. That is mean the, that means in the first quadrant itself, like in the first box. Okay. Then zero one, the second box, and then the second row, first column. So it is one zero and the one one. So if I plot this, you will understand how it is coming. So you can see here the first plot is a sign one, okay. Then the cost one. Now how we will understand whether it is sign or not? See if you can see here it is starting from zero. So sign zero we all know is the value is zero, and uh, sign ninety degree is basically one. So here it is coming one. Whereas you can see the cost one is starting from zero basically. The cost zero is one. So the, that is a value. The cost zero is giving you as the one. Okay, so this is a sign, this is cos, and this is tan, and this is sin c. Now, if I change these uh, areas, like change these um, indexes, so I want to plot my 
uh, sine curve over here. So I will put here zero one, and I want to plot cos plot over here, and I will put here zero zero. Let's see how it works. So you can see that it just toggled. Okay. So likewise, you can have you have taken a matrix like you are just putting your plots in the boxes. So this is also another good you know like powerful technique where you if you want to see you know like several plots and you want to put it in the grid, or you are just you know like looping through some data and putting the plots in the grid. This can be a good example. Okay, so this is how you can use the subplots. So I will take five more minutes. Uh, to little bit show on the fusion chart. So here I will be ending with the Python chart, and this uh, uh, Jupyter notebook I will share in my GitHub link, so you can just use it, explore it. Uh, now there is another uh, like I will open this console. So this is basically Visual Studio Community Edition. Uh, so here you, if, if you see, if I run this, I have used some fusion chart, and fusion chart has a very good documentation. Uh, and in my earlier session, I told that you can use some machine learning techniques like F sharp is a very good tool, like where you can, you know, like leverage the machine learning tools, AI tools, you can do the analysis of the data. So when you have a backend library F sharp, you have to just render those analysis to a C sharp uh, website, then you can render those chart in the website also. So there is endless possibilities in it. I will run this chart, you can see. So it is opening in my local host, as you can see. Okay, so if I see, if you see, I have taken some chart over here and these are very interactive charts. So if you see the first one is a column chart, then the second one is stacked bar chart. So if you see here, and I can toggle these values actually, see how interactive it is. So by basically you can build some interactive dashboards uh, in this uh, fusion chart, basically in the website. So you can analyze your data in the F sharp using the, anal analyze the data analysis tools and all the machine learning tools and everything, statistical tools basically. And then you can render this data to your website using the C-sharp console. So now you can see that how interactive it is. So if you go and see this pie chart and see this is like very much like it is cool kind of. It is giving a good interactive, you know, like the platform. And there is a very good documentation also for, uh, I will close this. So there's a very documentation also, if you see here for the fusion chart. So everything is there given there, the code is given there, the c -sharp code, vb.net code, even Python, AngularJS, ReactJS, all the codes are given there. So I will just open and show you one thing. Just give me a moment. So if you see here, this is a pie chart. And if you see here, very good documentation is given. If you see, this is a C-sharp documentation. This is a VB documentation. Like you can use this, leverage this code, you know, like to explore this, understand this, how you can leverage this. So again, this see, there is another kind of chart combination that all kinds of chart you will get here, like heat map, sun burst, everything is there. Okay, candlesticks, violin, everything is there. This is a combination chart. You can see like uh, there are three different, you know, like uh, uh, projections happened here, like actual revenue, projected revenue and the profit. And they have shown in three different charts. So again, this is a very interactive platform. Now it is very easy, like if I want to, you know, like three minutes is still remaining, I can show you like how fastly I can do this. If I want to, you know, like use this code, uh, if I want to use this code in a, uh, like to build a combination chart. Okay, so I will just copy this. Okay, I will go here to my pages. I will add a page over here. And this is a Razor HTML page. So I will add a blank page basically. Okay, and I will give a name, say, combination. Okay, so this is a empty data I am finding here. Okay, so I will go here and I will find this uh, page. Now I will go to the backend. So this is where I have to actually copy paste this code. I have already copied it. I am pasted, pasting it now. Okay, now there will be two problems. Like this literal is coming. Instead of this literal, what I will do, I will take a variable here. Uh, so I will copy it straightforwardly from here, what I have done in the other chart. So if I go here, I will just copy this variable. So this is a string variable, basically. I will copy and put it and I will just, you know, like render everything in the string variable. I am done over here. So now just I will take this variable and instead of literal, I will render everything over here in the string variable and I will call this variable. So this is what I am doing here. Now I am set with this, okay? The backend page I am set. Now the front end page I will go here. I will copy the entire HTML thing what I have written over here. So I have used some bootstrap libraries, some fusion chat libraries. Uh, so I will just uh, copy this 
and paste it. Okay, so if you can see here, uh, already I am calling this chart JSON. So this is getting called from this backend code. Okay, now only one thing I need to do is I need to add this uh, link to my site. So this link is still not added. So just to navigate, I want to add this link. So what I will do, I will put combination, the site name of the page, basically. Okay, and I will put here combination chart. So I am done. I am good with this. I will just copy this and I will put in my index data also. Okay, I am set. Now this is this is how much time it, it took me to explore this chart basically. So I am just running this. Let me check the error once. Okay, fine, understood. So I will just delete this part. Okay, so as you can see, it is appearing over here. Okay, if I go here, you can actually see this chart. Like how interactive it is. I can just see the like the project revenue and the profit. Okay, I can just toggle this values like this. I can see everything together. Also, one more thing is that if you see here, I haven't added that piece of code here. So only three lines of code I need to add over here. I can export this chart as is as any of this, you know, like any uh, format, PNG, JPG, PDF, any format. So if I just first export this, it is giving me this image. So likewise, you can export this chart also. Okay, so it is a very interactive one and you can build interactive dashboard with this. Also, if you see this hello everyone attending uh, data over today, this one, this uh, function actually is getting called from the F sharp library. So here, if you see there is a F sharp library and I am just, you know, like calling this function from here. So if you see here, uh, so I have two projects built here. One is test fusion, that is my website, another is web shop library. So if I just open this library, it is just sending me hello plus whatever value I am sending here. Okay. So I am sending here actually uh, all everything like everyone attending data over today. So it is appending with hello and returning me back. So I'm just calling this function and I'm getting this uh, string, the entire string. So I will show that also uh, just one second. So here, if you see here, I am just calling, I am just reference, referencing this library. So using F sharp library, class library, and I am, I can, uh, you know, like then access all the function in that library written. So I am just calling this say dot hello, and I am passing this everyone attended data hour today. Okay. So this is where it is coming from. So that likewise, you can understand that what you can do in F sharp and how you can render data, all the data to the C sharp website, and you can render beautiful charts. I hope this session gives you some insight, like how, you know, like the modern charting is done and all. Um, I hope this, uh, you know, like you find it useful. Okay, is the confidence interval in the plot, uh, which plot you are referring to basically? So if you are plotting anything like, you know, like in the Gaussian distribution or the normal curve, and if you want to give some confidence interval, you can plot it accordingly. So basically we can plot the uh, limit, basically the confidence interval is, you know, like the 95% confidence or the 90% confidence what we give. So you can plot accordingly. Can we have this Jupyter Netbook shared? Yes, I will share it. Uh, how you add a regression line to the scatter plot? You have to just put kind equal to REG as I have shown, then the uh, regression line will occur. So all these variables you can see in the scatter plot uh, function definition. As I told you, like you can just do a shift tab and you can see the entire definition. Hello, can we get a copy of this? Yes, I will share it. Okay. Uh, we will have the recording. Uh, I think analytics with the will share the recording too. Can you add labels to bar and box plot? Yes, you can add the labels. There are all the, like as I have shown you, like I have shown you the basic things, styles, labels, uh, you can change the colors, color maps, everything you can do on those uh, charts. Okay, so there are various parameters you can just, you know, like plug and play. Can you please share? Yes, I will share. What is the relevance of fusion charts? Yes, fusion chart is relevant like when you are, you know, like building some interactive dashboards in the website. Uh, even Python, Jupyter, you, with Python, Jupyter notebook also you can do it. Uh, but, you know, like there are some legacy systems where the uh, applications are already built in .NET uh, system. So then you can leverage those fusion charts and build those websites. And also like if you're using F sharp for data analysis as a main data analysis tool, then you can do all the analysis in the F sharp and render the data to the website through C sharp website. So for that only I show that integration. I have shown that integration to you. Can you present multiple graphs in single page? Yes, you can present. 
you can take a uh, like in the same website you can just you know like use some bootstrapping techniques some table formats and you can just you know like render multiple charts in a simple single uh, web web page that you can do please get give, give your github i will share that yes i am done uh, with the question answers thank you everyone i think uh, you have some insight on this